First, we had this. Then, we had this. Now, we have this. I'm Nick Moke for Digital Trends, and the way we've read has really changed a lot over the last five years as we've gone from books to e-ink readers to this, probably most controversial reader, Apple's iPad. Um, that said, not everyone would probably agree that things have changed for the better. Um, we're going to take a look at each of these uh, readers today and see how Apple's iPad sort of stacks up as a replacement for the book. So the first thing I think we need to talk about is the relative comfort of all of these formats. And that is to say, the comfort of holding it, the comfort of transporting it, and of course, the comfort of actually reading it. Uh, we won't go too far into books. I think we've all read actual books, so that's uh, pretty much out. But I will start talking with the uh, Barnes & Noble Nook, which is a pretty you know, generic e-reader. It uses an e-ink screen, which is sort of the defining feature of this type of reader. Um, the reason e-ink is used is because it doesn't require a backlight. You can read with existing light, overhead light, you can read at the beach uh, under the sun, uh, and it's actually still very readable in those conditions where an, an LCD screen can, can wash out. Uh, the other big advantage of e-ink is that it uses very, very little electricity. Uh, you can have these screens on for days without actually consuming uh, any uh, electricity. Um, the other thing is, it doesn't refresh 60 times a second like an LCD does, which some people think causes headaches and just general eye strain after reading a long time on an LCD screen. Um, so that's what we're dealing with here on the, the Barnes & Noble Nook. Uh, now obviously the iPad is an LCD screen. Um, this is an IPS screen that stands for in-plane switching, which is a actually a better type of LCD than what you're typically finding. It has a better viewing angle, which is great for reading obviously. The screen also has great contrast and brightness. Um, however, we did notice when we're actually reading with the iPad, especially at night, that it does cause some eye strain. Uh, it's not as comfortable to read as this is um, over the long term. And I mean, that's definitely an issue if you're going to spend eight hours reading a book as somebody who's you know, reading for school might, for instance, uh, in college or in high school if you're reading Romeo and Juliet uh, and you, you're taking in a lot of it at once. This might end up causing uh, more discomfort than either the paper version or the uh, Nook or an equivalent reader. Uh, so in terms of actual reading comfort long term, the iPad definitely falls down a little bit. We also have to agree that it's a lot less comfortable to hold than something like this. Um, it's a pound and a half, which is not that heavy sounding, but compared to this, I mean, it's actually quite a bit. Um, and the size, too, is kind of uh, not as convenient to hold as something like this, which is like a pa paperback novel. Um, after holding this for a while, you feel tempted to sort of set it down or prop it up somewhere because it really just weighs down in your hands quite a bit. Um, this is far more portable, if you ask me. Uh, it's both lighter and smaller. Um, the fact that it's smaller doesn't really seem to impact the ability to read. I mean, you have as many pages as you, as you need to scroll through. So in terms of uh, portability and comfort, I think the Nook or equivalent readers like the Kindle really come out on top. Now we do think the Nook is more comfortable to actually read, but that doesn't take into account how easy these are to actually use. Um, the iPad, obviously, being an Apple product, has been made very intuitive to use. Uh, you can see we have two books pulled up here. Uh, we have Winnie the Pooh here and Dracula on our Nook. Um, you can see on the iPad, it's very easy to navigate throughout the book. We see the page number as I move my finger here, and you can just quickly jump to any page as you would um, in a physical book. Uh, and obviously, when I turn the page, you have a nice little graphic. Very easy to do, um, really pretty impossible to mess up. The Nook, quite a bit more complicated. You have to use this bottom screen here, which is the only touch-sensitive part of it. Uh, you can turn pages incrementally with uh, these side buttons here, but to actually jump to a page, you need to actually do it uh, on the bottom here. You'll also notice that as I go, uh, you know, if I, if I want to uh, go to the cover, when I change pages, it obviously takes quite a bit longer on the Nook. The e-ink screen is not as responsive. Um, even though this color LCD screen is fairly responsive to touch, uh, it is not connected to the actual screen above. This is not touch sensitive, so it's definitely less intuitive in that regard because I have to make choices down here that relate to the screen up here, but I'm not just clicking on what I want to do, um, which definitely makes a big difference. Obviously, there are some uh, e-ink readers coming up that will be touch sensitive, but this is generally what the market is composed of right now. So an obvious concern if you're going to be using these devices as e-readers is where you're going to actually get your e-books. Um, we have pulled up here the New York Times bestsellers list 
from both the Nook and the iPad. Um, so we're looking at uh, the stores on both devices. Obviously you see this, a lot of the same titles here and even a lot of the same prices. For instance, a lot of these are priced at $9.99. Um, we compared a lot of different titles to actually see uh, if either one is, is cheaper and it goes both ways. Uh, sometimes the Nook has the price advantage, sometimes the iPad has the price advantage, um, and usually it's by less than a dollar, so it really doesn't matter too much on that account. And the same goes with actually being able to find books. Sometimes you can actually find a title in Apple Store that you can't find in Barnes & Noble Store, and sometimes vice versa. So we think these two are very, very close when it comes to the actual bookstore. Now the experience on the iPad is obviously a lot smoother. Um, we're looking at color covers here, and we can more easily search Obviously, we have to work through the color uh, touchscreen here, but that's again part of the interface. So battery life was obviously not a concern when you were reading on paper, but when you go digital, it's something you suddenly have to worry about. Now the iPad is rated for 10 hours of continuous operation and surprisingly enough when we tested it, it actually delivered, which is actually pretty impressive for a device with an LCD screen. Um, because the Nook or Kindle has uh, an e-ink screen, the Nook actually delivers 10 days of uh, continuous reading. Um, that's obviously quite a bit more because even if we're willing to say that um, 10 hours from the iPad is roughly a day of reading, uh, you're getting 10 times as much basically from the Nook. Now you have to consider that realistically most people will have a chance to charge their device after 10 hours of reading. You're not just going to have these 48 hour uh, reading marathons that you could with the Nook, but most people won't. So as a, a realistic concern, the 10 hour limitation on the iPad is not that big a deal. But you do have to consider that sometimes a lot of people like to read away from outlets um, when they're traveling and whatnot. And so the iPad might be more cumbersome and it might be less flexible in that circumstance where so you can go days with the Nook without having to worry about it. So as a comparison to the actual book, the Nook is certainly far closer to the flexibility you get with the paperback. Um, but realistically, probably not that big an issue. So as with any purchase, price is obviously a major consideration here. The iPad, even the cheapest model that just has Wi-Fi is $499. Whereas if you go to look at a Amazon Kindle or a Barnes & Noble Nook, you're looking at $259, and that's with built-in wireless for life. Um, so you're going to be able to buy books, whether you have Wi-Fi or not, on either of those devices. Um, with the iPad, if you get the 3G model, which is $129 more than the cheapest Wi-Fi model, um, you're also going to have to pay for a 3G plan on AT&T, which is at least $15 a month. Now that is a limited plan. We doubt you're going to burn through the, the limited amount of data uh, with eBooks alone, but it's an important consideration that can definitely add up. Um, you also have to consider, of course, the iPad can do a lot more than just eBooks. So it's really not fair to compare them totally on price because this is a totally different type of device than this. But if we're looking at just as an eBook reader, um, I think surely the, the Amazon Kindle or the Barnes & Noble Nook comes out on top for cost and value. At the end of the day, it's really apples and oranges between these two. The iPad is a great multifunction device that does a lot of things and it does e-reading pretty well. The Barnes & Noble Nook or Amazon Kindle is a very focused niche device that does e-reading excellent. Um, so if you're a bookworm, you're the type of person that reads multiple books a month, you're looking for strictly a replacement to a paperback, um, one of these devices is definitely a better idea for you. Um, however, if you think that you would use any of the uh, greater functions of the iPad, um, really I think that it's probably a better long-term investment and a better value.